Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. We're going to start off today with some nice sales. The Masters of the Universe promo ads both sold to the same person. Uh, you remember these? I've got them right here uh, on this shelf where I keep all the uh, prints and things like uh, folders and uh, promo ads and stuff. That's exactly where that would go. Uh, so these sold for $50 each. Just great, great sales right here. Very happy to start the day off with this one. I'll show it to you if you didn't see uh, the episode. This is a promo ad from Filmation on uh, He-Man and She-Ra in the movie Secret of the Sword. And then uh, this one here, which I sold uh, yesterday, is She-Ra Princess of Power on the uh, folder cover. And then this was to promote the TV series, He-Man and Masters of the Universe. That one came from 1986. So uh, very excited about both of those going out. I love anything Masters of the Universe related. And as a tip for all of you out there, if you see anything Masters of the Universe related, especially if it's vintage, look into picking it up. It is just great stuff. And as another little tip, make sure in your title, you put M-O-T-U, MOTU, stands for Masters of the Universe. People search for that keyword. All right, now, oh, the next item that's sold right here, our little teddy bear is going, well, he's not so little, he's like a medium size, and this one is going to Ivona in Latvia, so an international sale here from an international uh, supporter of the channel. So thank you very much, uh, Avona, for the purchase. I really appreciate it. Oh, he's saying goodbye. Take care, buddy. We're going to miss you here. We'll uh, say goodbye to little Pinky and uh, all the, we'll say goodbye to Petey and, and everyone. Now, Darth Vader is going to take your your spot right now. So uh, he's just moving right in. He's not wasting any time. All right. So maybe later on, I'll open up that Darth Vader case and show you some of the toys inside of there. I even have another one of those cases filled with figures. So two Darth Vader ones, we might do a double Darth Vader reveal because eventually what we're going to start doing is taking those figures and listing them and you could pick which figures I wind up listing. So that is fun. I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, speaking of picking things to list right now, let's go over to our uh, photos over here. This is from the Magician Estate House. The man who uh, owned that house, Bob Gibbons, also worked as a clown, uh, famous locally here in Syracuse, New York, as Scoopy the Clown. His wife was Sweetheart the Clown, which is why you're going to see this one signed to Scoopy and Sweetheart. And this is signed to them by Whistles and Kitty. Now, I'm guessing that Kitty is what he's holding in his hand. I was thinking maybe it would be the name of uh, you know, a female clown or something like that. I, I don't know, but uh, this is uh, what it looks like he's holding. I mean, it kind of looks like a skunk too, but maybe it is a cat, I'm not sure. But we're gonna go with this one. I love the look of this. It'll look awesome in a frame. Anyone who collects circus stuff, and there's a big uh, community out there of people who collect this type of stuff, would love to have this hanging, especially when I could describe the provenance of the item when they know who uh, Sweetheart and, and Scoopy the Clown are and all that stuff, and I can identify them. It really helps add value to the piece. So anytime you have provenance, make sure you add that to your listing. All right, now let's go pick out another poster. Okay, so I did not hear back from anyone in terms of any one of these posters that you wanted me to pull out. I always think it's more fun when people watching pick a poster. Uh, so I'm going to be a rebel today, and I'm going to go into this box over here. There's still a few residuals, and I'm going to grab this one here, this, this green one. And so if you need a friend, um, here. I think this is a Peanuts one from what I could remember. So uh, let's unroll it upstairs. And uh, well, actually, before we do that, um, let me show you one other thing we need to do. All right, so while I was filming that former scene with you, we had a really tender moment here. Uh, this bear here, which I actually never named him, but uh, I'm going to give him the name of Baxter. And we'll see what Avona names him, but just for now, that's going to be his name. And so he was telling me that he really doesn't feel comfortable with Darth Vader taking his spot. So we're going to go into the shed and pull out a replacement plush to go sit in this spot. Does that make you feel better, buddy? All right, let's go out and get that other plush. All right, so we're gonna do something a little different today, and this is a you decide vote. 
So I put a poll up in the community section. It's done by now by the time you're watching this, but this is why you gotta check out the community tab because I'm trying to get more of your feedback and interaction for this channel. And so what I did is I said, do you want me to put up this plush dog or this plush bear? You might remember seeing it, but there we go right there. Which one of those should I list? So by the end of this video, we'll get a consensus from people on what to do. And then I'll come back out later, grab it, and uh, put one of them up. Oh, hey, I'm over at the shipping center. And uh, you know, while you're here, I guess I'll pass on a little tip to you about shipping. And that is, these boards could be real important for you, these bags and boards. They're a special size called the treasury size. And if you're not into comic books, you may not know about them, but you still will want to pick them up because they're helpful at shipping things like these folders. So any kind of folder that you wanna ship and send out and protect, it's real helpful if you have a bag and a board. The problem is if you get the traditional magazine size bags and boards, it's gonna to be too small for this. So I've told you before, but I love the company BCW. They're really the gold standard out there for these bags and boards. And this is it right here, treasury size. Uh, so you can see the size there. It's uh, 10 and a half by 13 and a half inches. So these treasury bags really are ideal for something like a folder. And this is just a traditional size folder, but even if they were a little bigger, uh, there'd still be enough wiggle room inside of this for it to go. So you could see here, it's just gonna slide in real easily and there's still a little bit of uh, a wiggle room in there. If you are uh, interested in these bags or other size bags, I have all the links to them at the very bottom of the description uh, section in my video. Now, uh, another tip that uh, I'm gonna pass on to you and this is in response to a question from Colin Bartley. Colin Bartley's in the house today. He wants to know with regards to these slide rules, that I picked up yesterday. And this is actually not one that I got yesterday. These are other ones I have laying around down here that I'm gonna combine with the ones from the estate sale. But he was wondering how to ship them out because he has a bunch of them that he wants to sell. Well, it's a very simple principle and it's the prime time sandwich technique that I have talked about so many times before and you could use for so many different types of items. And so all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this and you're just gonna get a standard piece of small bubble wrap like that and you're just gonna lay it right on top of the bubble wrap and you're just gonna fold it over on itself just like that. Just put like, you know, some pieces of tape on it. I won't tape the whole thing up, but just to secure it once. And you know, just fold over the edges and just tape it in on itself just like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to put it between two pieces of cardboard and you want it to be firm cardboard. You see there how it's corrugated, so it's not gonna snap or bend really easily. That's important, not how many layers of cardboard you have. Doesn't matter if you have 10 layers of thin, uh, crappy cardboard. You wanna have a nice, firm, solid layer of cardboard that could beat you know, 10 bad flimsy layers. So then you just put it in like this, you make your little sandwich, you know, I would, normally just tuck this in on itself and just tape it all around and then uh, you're good to go. You can wrap like a poly mailer around it or, or something like that. And that's the same exact type of technique, uh, Colin and others that I'm gonna be using for this uh, folder right here. All I have to do is get two big sturdy pieces of cardboard and just tape it around and we'll be all set with this as well. Sturdy cardboard taped on one side with a little bit of margin around the end, nice and secure now protected on both sides and taped up all the way around. And by the way, for something like this, that's an expensive item and you really wanna go above board and make sure that like there's like a 100% chance or as close as possible that that thing is not going to get damaged in the transport. This is the type of cardboard that you want to use. It's a special type of cardboard that comes from the bottom of fruit boxes and vegetable boxes at wholesale stores, places like Costco and places like BJ's and Sam's Club. That's where you wanna get this stuff. It is rock solid. And this stuff is just not gonna break. It's so hard. You'd literally have to stay here and just crush it down, snap it in half. I mean, it's really, really solid.
So let me show you, by the way, why that cardboard is so strong and it could help you identify a strong cardboard when you are out looking for things. So here is the piece of cardboard that I was showing Colin earlier uh, for the slide rules. And you could see inside of there, there's these little tubules that helps give it some shock resistance. It helps give it some cushioning there. Uh, it's what I refer to when I say that it is uh, corrugated because it creates this little system of ridges and grooves. Uh, but if we look over here at that strong cardboard uh, from the bottom of the fruit boxes, this actually came from Costco, what you're going to see there is two layers superimposed on one another with those air bubbles and those little air tubules inside. And so that is giving it double the strength. It's double resistant the way it's stacked up upon one another. So always pay attention to the grooves. I always look at that when I'm looking for protective cardboard to purchase. All right, well, here we go. It is in the 24 by 24 inch poly mailer trimmed down. It's all set to go now uh, to its new home. Uh, this thing is gonna arrive safe and secure. Uh, one other thing I should tell you about that uh, thick cardboard from the bottom of those fruit boxes, if you go and purchase it, is you better make sure, if you're going to use something like that, that you invest in a very strong pair of scissors slash shears. In fact, the only pair of scissors that I use in my reselling business is these right here. I have another pair upstairs, uh, but this is from a company called WISS, W I S. Uh, I'm going to give you a reselling tip at the same time because this company, WISS, has been around for so long that they are known for uh, producing very strong, reliable scissors, shears, and other types of tools. So if you ever come across them, and I do when I go out treasure hunting for stuff, you'll find them in old estates, definitely pick it up, mark that brand down. Uh, this will cut through any kind of cardboard like butter. If you just use regular scissors, you're going to hurt your fingers, hurt your hands if you're doing enough of this cardboard cutting. If you're interested in something like this, of course, I have the link down below in the description section. So this is the poster I found, not Peanuts. I was close, uh, but another cool uh, 80s cartoon. Here we go with Daisy coming in the picture right there. What's that, Daisy? You like the Smurfs? Yes, we've got a Smurf right here. So uh, not as big as the other posters. It's 19 inches by 13 and a half, but definitely cool. Uh, a lot of you probably remember uh, seeing these hung up in school, for example, on the hallways. I remember the estate sale where I found this. And uh, looking forward to getting this one listed. A lot of vintage Smurfs fans out there are going to love this one. So cool piece right there. And Daisy seems to approve of it. So thanks, Daisy. All right, so we are gonna head back over to the shed and grab the plush that won from the result of that poll that I had in the community section. And it really wasn't even close. The vast majority of you said that you wanted the bear to win. So let's go grab the bear. Hey, where? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't go up there and read the comic books. You don't even have any fingers. What are you gonna damage the books? Oh, he, he's a nice guy though. He, he wouldn't do anything to, to damage anything on purpose. Uh, look at the size of them though. Look at the size of those paws. Uh, he is gigantic, soft and fluffy. He even has a bigger head than I do and uh, that's not easy to do. So let's go get him listed and keep those comic books safe. Okay, okay, I'll tell them. He got 67% and the dog got 33%. <laughs> so I originally was gonna wear this shirt today for today's video. I had purchased it uh, from Courtney from the Bolo Buddies YouTube channel, which you should all go uh, check out. At the time I purchased it, I was really drawn in by uh, the graphic here. Uh, but as you can see here, it doesn't have a label on the back. So I went by measurements and I thought it would fit me as an XXL, but this is really designed more for someone who has an XL. Uh, so I figured, I know I have a lot of Masters of the Universe fans who watch this who would love this shirt. If uh, it fit me right, I would definitely have kept it, but uh, time to get rid of it, and I hope one of you enjoy it. So I don't know how many of you saw, but eBay came out with this new policy that the only way to maintain top rated seller status for items that you're shipping out internationally is if you offer free 30 day returns. A lot of you are probably laughing right now hearing that and I am too because I am not going to do that. There's several reasons why. Uh, one, the cost of an international return depending on what country it's in 
could be dramatically higher than a domestic return, and you really could wind up losing out on it. Number two, there's an increased chance that you're going to be dealing with scammers when you're dealing with international uh, buyers if they are going into it knowing that there are free returns on the item. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case if you are not offering free returns, but if you are offering free returns, I think you open yourself up to a much bigger risk. And the third reason is because for international items, there's much less competition out there in terms of who you are competing with with the seller. So very often you are the only person who is offering that one particular item. Even though there could be many other of them listed domestically, you may very well be the only person willing to ship it internationally. And so if that person really wants the item, they're going to get it whether or not you are offering free returns on it. At least in the majority of the cases, that's what I believe would happen. So that's why I'm not doing that. I do offer free returns domestically because the types of items that I sell, I have a very, very low return rate. So for me, and that might not be the case in your uh, particular area, what you sell in, clothing would be really one of the highest risk areas if that's predominantly what you sell for returns. Uh, but for me, it's very low. So I'm willing to eat the cost of an occasional return uh, with the belief or the notion going into it that I would make many more sales because I offer free returns, I'm giving that buyer some consumer confidence and I'm you know, conveying my own confidence in my item uh, that it would sell. All right, so you're probably wondering why it is that I'm standing here in front of the refrigerator. It's just because I wanna show you how tall I am. No, I'm just kidding, really. The reason why I'm here is that for whatever reason, I have had sitting on top of this refrigerator a little plastic bag that has contained the original 12 Star Wars figures produced by Kenner in 1977 with the weapons. And so I've just been listing them one by one. I got them at a private estate sale pick. And uh, I'm down to one last one to list. And it's this Stormtrooper here. Uh, I saved it for the end because it has a bunch of discoloration and wear on it. So I'm just going to list it and, uh, you know, just get rid of it. That'll be the last one. And then we are going to start heading inside to look at those uh, Star Wars figures inside the Darth Vader cases. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So here's a little photo tip for you. This is really something that helps take much better photos of action figures is to stand them on top of a display like this. It just gives it a much better perspective compared to if they're just standing flat down on the board. Uh, you could get a piece like this, for example, at like a department store or something. You could just ask them if they have any plastic pieces like this that they're willing to uh, give away. But you could do all sorts of neat things. Uh, you could check out some of my photos uh, in my store, which will show you the uh, final version of what the, this looks like once you apply a white background to it. Well, actually, there's a good example right there. All right, so as you can see here, we've got two Darth Vader cases. Let's crack these open and see what figures are inside. We're gonna call this one case number one. So just gonna pop that top clip there. And uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of them. They're sort of random. They're not all in the correct uh, slot, although some of them are. Uh, but there's a bunch of them uh, in here. There's a little uh, Yoda uh, down here, for example. So uh, there's a bunch in there. So now I have another bag with the little weapons. Uh, so some of them I may be able to match up. Not all, uh, but some. So let's crack open case number two. And oh boy, look, there's a lot in here. Oh my goodness, crazy. So uh, again, if you see... Uh, anything you like, just just let me know, and uh, I'll try to uh, make it a special thing for you to get them listed. So, boy, there's, there's just a bunch of them. All right, and here's a view of them being a little bit more organized and straightened out uh, for those of you who want a little bit of a closer look at them. All right, everyone, subscriber of the day goes to Garden Daisy, always leaving great questions and comments. She wanted to know where she could get these poster tubes. I get them in bulk at Amazon. I put an affiliate link down below for the 2x24s and the 2x36s. There's places you could get them for free. I've talked about that before. Just search for my other poster videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all at the next video. Take care.